If Bitcoin is successful in becoming a new form of money and becoming the money that people use, then we would have to take a look at what is the value of all the money in the world. And it's currently valued at approximately $90 trillion. If you take a look at all of these governments, fiat currencies, if Bitcoin truly uh, takes over this market cap, then Bitcoin could go to valuations of four to five million dollars per Bitcoin. And uh, that is calculated in today's money. Hey, stop stealing my trading strategies. If you want to build your own trading strategies, predict, learn and earn Bitcoin with zero risk. Definitely have a look at our community app. It's tons of fun. Dear crypto community and blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites, the no BS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And today we're at the Tech Park 2020 Summit with a special edition Kryptonites on the road in Davos. And we promised to have some amazing people on the show. And today we have a super duper extra amazing person, Carl the Moon. Awesome to have you, my friend. And do you see this, my friend? The moon. Perfect. The moon. Perfect. To the moon. To the moon, baby. To the yeah. moon. So first and foremost, Carl, I have to ask you, at the beginning of every video you make, you have something with your voice. And a lot of viewers out there think that you're doing something with editing. Can you actually tell us or show us if it's real or not? All right, so we're going to talk about so many cool, amazing things. And if you think that that sounds interesting, then I think that you should definitely watch this video. <laughs> perfect, perfect, man. That's it's all awesome. real. There's no, there's no editing going on right there. Uh, some people think that I, I, I have one recording of it and that I have sped, sped it up and then just copy it in every video. But it's, I do it um, organically in every video. So every time I say it's a new, it's a new recording. It's so, really um, good, really yeah. good. Thank you so much for that. And, and Carl, there's there's so many interesting, interesting things I want to ask you. But uh, when I looked at your one of your last videos with Crypto Lark, Coin Telegraph, mm -hmm. I think you're talking about what is a killer DAP or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you seem really passionate about monetary policies. Uh, can you do you mind telling us a little bit, educating us because I think you really see that great depth in that. Yeah, for sure. So. Everyone is looking for this new killer app in, in crypto and what is going to, to change the world next and, and uh, we're going to decentralize this and decentralize that. But I think what I want to focus on is money and, and just realize that decentralizing money is the most important thing we should focus on because I believe that that is um, going to radically change the whole world economy. Um, I mean, thousands of years we've seen gold being used as a form of money and gold is decentralized. And um, sadly, over the past 100 years, we've seen how central banks and, and the private banks have um, taken us from this gold standard and um, introducing more and more centralization, more and more third parties to the point where today money, as we call it today, which is in fact not really money. I'm, I can go into that why I believe that. Uh, the dollar bills we use today, it's not actually money, but these are simply just pieces of paper that were um, at some point back, in, the few, uh, back in, the, in history, they were in fact backed up by gold, but are no longer. And the thing about money is that there are some properties that needs to, uh, to be, um, uh, money needs to have, for example, it needs to be fungible, which means that a, a $20 bill has to be equally as valuable as the next do dollar bill. They are interchangeable and has to be divisible, portable and, um, and recognizable. But the most important part about money is that it has to be a store of value, right? A store of value over time. And um, if you look at the US dollar and all the other fiat currencies in the world, as they are called when they are in fact government money not backed up by gold, they, they lose value purchasing power year over year through inflation. Now, if the definition of money is that it has to hold value and over time, and fiat money does the exact opposite, it, it drops in value over time, then, then it cannot be money. And it is not money by the definition. So at best, it's a form of currency, the, the money we use today. Um, so I would say that gold was money back in back uh, historically and um, it was the best form of money and it has worked out very well. Now today we have a digital world 
and digital payments is uh, the whole infrastructure is built on the internet so it would be hard to introduce uh, gold again to reintroduce gold because of the fact that the world looks completely different from uh, hundreds of years ago so that's where Bitcoin comes in where, where Bitcoin can can uh, definitely serve a purpose and um, looking again at these properties Bitcoin is fungible one Bitcoin is just as valuable as the next Bitcoin they are interchangeable and it's extremely divisible more divisible than any other form of money we've seen before and uh, but most important um, I think that Bitcoin will prove to be a very good store value over time because of its scarce supply. We can never uh, inflate Bitcoin over the 21 million Bitcoin limit and that is unique to Bitcoin. There's basically nothing else that has this absolute scarcity as I would like to call it because there are things in, in the world that are scarce. Gold for example. Gold is scarce and that therefore it has value among other properties of course but the scarcity is a key factor in something that that has to be uh, or something that's going to be money because as soon as it's easy easily printable then you get this inflation so the US dollar is easy money because it's easy to print gold is hard money because it's hard to print it's hard to mine it costs costs a lot of money to mine and bitcoin happens to be the hardest money on the planet because it is impossible to inflate beyond this 21 million limit. That's beautifully put, so much wise. And I love how you summarize that, really really clarifying why, why we're doing this. Um, and you were mentioning inflation. You know, when I took economics class when I was a kid, like everyone would, would tell me that inflation is a good thing because it helps, you know, have stable markets, it helps control the economy and stuff like that. But a lot of people now are starting to look at deflation and how that's powerful. Do you mind weighing in your views on that specific topic? Yeah, so some people would say that the fact that Bitcoin has a limited supply is a bad thing because eventually it will be a deflationary asset and this will be bad for the economy. But, um, and people claim it's deflationary because of the fact that people will lose their Bitcoin. And so, so the supply is not only limited, it will actually shrink. Now, I don't think that people will lose their, their Bitcoin in such a um that there will there will never be the, like this huge momentum where people just lose all their bitcoin i don't think that's going to be a problem uh, on the exact contrary i think that a limited supply the strict limited supply is, is, is that's exactly what we need with the form of money uh, if gold was strictly limited that would be even better but it's not it will always have an inflation rate of like one two percent per year and um, i think it's um the perfect property for money to to have this absolute scarcity and uh um, I think that people will increasingly realize this as we see uh, countries like Venezuela and Argentina and uh, many countries fall into this high inflationary state. And some people, some people think that the United States and maybe Sweden and other countries are, um, have been lucky to not have high inflation. But that's if you trust the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. And if there's one thing that is for sure, then it's that governments tend to lie about the inflation rate. Um, even more so when the inflation is crazy, like in Venezuela, but actually also when you have low inflation. Um, so, for example, if you don't include real estate prices and stock prices and, and maybe old vintage cars and specific watch collections into the consumer price index in this basket of assets, then you get a a um, an insufficient measurement of the inflation. So for example, if, if there's one asset in this basket that just starts to shoot up in price, they just pull it out and say that it's an, a statistical anomaly and it doesn't fit the basket. But that's not, a, that's not a good way of measuring inflation. Of course, you need to have the broadest measurement possible and seeing Sweden, like Stockholm, London, these, we see these uh, crazy real estate prices for the past few years. Um, it's obvious that the inflation is much higher than, than this official number of like 1%, 2%. I think th there are different sources that say different things, but people seem to have some kind of consensus that the inflation might be like 5, 6, maybe even 7, 8% in even these um, low inflation countries. Uh, if you do consider a broader measurement of the inflation rate. That's so beautifully put because, you know, a lot of people are starting to realize that you're saying deflationary is not necessarily bad. And on the on the opposite, you know, inflationary assets have actually hurt us in the long run and we lose value over time. And I really like this consumer price index. I didn't know that they would kind of, you know, create some sort of system that would 
give you inaccurate data. That's really interesting. Are there any other like indicators like that that, that really fascinate you when you're looking at, at this market? Or, Well, I mean, I can just like touch quickly on why real estate price, prices are going up so much. Please do. So when, well, the problem when you have this high inflation is that people are looking for places to hide their, hide their wealth. And uh, one place that people use, usually tend to hide their wealth is in real estate. And um, the thing about these apartments in London and Stockholm and other places where the prices are insane, this is sometimes like wealthy individuals, they take their money and they buy these apartments not to live in, but actually as a store of value, as investments. And um, so, so there are this phenomenon where you have like uh, empty apartments around the world in these uh, cities because um, you, you need these safe havens when the inflation is getting so high. This is something that wouldn't happen if, if the monetary base is, has a limited supply. And that's why Bitcoin plays a huge role, in my opinion, in the future as an alternative to this current fiat, uh, fiat monetary system. That's really interesting. And like you said, when I talk to my cousins, the millennials or Gen Z, mm -hmm. like a lot of them say that they don't want to even invest in real estate for those reasons, but also because they become digital nomads, you know, like they travel the world. They don't want to have a specific resident. They just want to, you know, be free and mobile. Uh, and, and what's really interesting, what you said is like gold doesn't really have that mobile or mobility that Bitcoin has, which kind of goes along with the generations, right? Yeah, yeah. so for sure, Bitcoin is definitely an improvement upon what gold uh, was previously. Uh, so these properties for money, for example, it has to be portable. Now, Bitcoin is much more portable than gold, obviously. Like, transacting millions of dollars in gold is extremely hard and extremely expensive. But in Bitcoin, you can do it very, very quickly and there's no intermediary necessary and uh, it's global, completely borderless and it just changes the whole way we think about money and the economy and I truly believe that the value of Bitcoin is tremendously higher than the current price of Bitcoin and I believe that in the next few years people will um, increasingly realize the true value of Bitcoin and uh, I mean I can make a long list of hundreds of different properties of Bitcoin but like it's censorship resistant, it's borderless, it's uh, like we can have low fees and um, completely uh, free from these third parties. And if we do see, for example, a financial crisis, people will look for places to yeah, hide their wealth and go away from third party risk and go away from uh, default risk while still remaining liquid. And Bitcoin is the perfect place to hide wealth and still remain liquid. These people that buy these apartments, uh, these wealthy individuals and these expensive apartments, if they had the chance to hide their wealth in something more liquid than apartments, they would. But there isn't. Um, in cash, you lose money year over year. And um, Bitcoin can be this liquid safe haven that uh, truly just changes the way we look at money and, and, um, and storing value without a third party. That's beautiful. So you agree with MM Crypto? Chris for earlier, sure. he said, uh, I see Bitcoin as being a safe haven. You agree with that? For statement? sure, for sure. Maybe that's going to take some time before we see the mainstream and like the, the big investors agree to this. Um, I think that in a potential financial crisis, which I think is going to happen within the next two years, probably, uh, Bitcoin might indeed go down um, initially in the crisis because Bitcoin is seen as a risky investment, even though uh, it fundamentally has everything going for it when it comes to being a store of value and being a safe haven. Uh, I think it's more in the long run um, that people will realize that if you want to hide wealth and if you want to make sure to cut away these third party risks, then Bitcoin will, will serve a perfect, perfect purpose. So um, it's more in the next few years. I'm glad she's so passionate about Bitcoin yeah. like that. It's really, really cool. Uh, Chris, earlier from Ember Crypto as well, he was talking, we're talking about the halvening or having, depending on how you want to call it. Uh, but a lot of people say it might be overhyped. Maybe it's not overhyped. But he was saying that there might be some, you know, weird behaviors such as front runners and, and different type of, you know, drops in. But overall, are, do you believe in this happening this year or does it worry you that everyone knows it? CNBC, every single media outlet is promoting it. So I think that this, this run up to 14,000 that we got, that was this premature hype, this front running and this correction that happened after. 
um, was the um, consequence or the reaction to this um, this overhype. So I think that we have already seen the the having being prematurely priced in and also now corrected. So I think that. 2020 i mean the having will be the biggest story for sure it is such a huge thing to see the supply the newly created supply get cut in half uh, the stock to flow and uh, i think that this will further create more and more attention towards bitcoin as a form of money and make more people aware of this inflation schedule that will eventually reach zero like i said this is the first time in history we've seen something have absolute scarcity nothing else in the world has zero percent inflation it's not possible except in the digital world so it is the first time we've seen something being digitally scarce absolutely scarce and the having will will put more attention to this fact thank you so much for that and obviously the happening is directly related to price action and you're the master of price action you do lots of ta almost on a daily basis right is every this? single day every single day uh, but today, rather than ask you on like a single day TA, can you give us more of a long run, long term price action view? Uh, because you, obviously you, you, this is your life, right? But can you really show us how far you see it and some cool stuff that you want to share? Yeah, so in the next few years, in the next big bull run, I believe that Bitcoin could easily go to um, valuations of $100,000 up to $300,000. I believe that the next all, uh, the next blow off top will range somewhere in these regions, just as 20,000 was the previous blow off top. Um, and uh, going even further into the future, if Bitcoin is successful in becoming a new form of money and becoming the money that people use, then logically we would have to take a look at what is the value of all the money in the world. And it's currently valued at approximately $90 trillion if you take a look at all of these governments, fiat currencies. Now, these are all bad money. It's easy money, easily inflatable. And I believe that the free market will weed out the bad money and choose the, the good money. And whether it be gold or Bitcoin, let's see. I believe Bitcoin, like I said, serves a better purpose today with this digital infrastructure. So I, I truly believe Bitcoin will take the place as the money in the world. If so, if Bitcoin truly uh, takes over this market cap, then Bitcoin could go to valuations of four to five million dollars per Bitcoin. And uh, that is calculated in today's money. Obviously, this with inflation, Bitcoin could be five trillion dollars per Bitcoin because the dollar, for example, wouldn't really be worth anything. But um, in today's money, in, in purchasing power, I believe that Bitcoin easily could, could reach these levels um, because of the fundamental power of Bitcoin as a form of money. And um, I mean, I, I can see the future where there are no longer no government currencies and all uh, nations, it's like a global economy where, where uh, just like gold served as money previously, where there were no borders, a, a um, money could be used in any uh, country without having to exchange back and forth. Um, and that is what Bitcoin can introduce in this digital world, which is just mind blowing actually. And I think that more and more people would just realize how truly fantastic this could be. It's so true. It's really mind blowing and fantastic, like you're saying. Um, and I know it. you as a technical analyst, as a trader, your strategies and indicators must change very often, always adjusting to the markets and really finding what works for you in that moment. But for example, these days, like what are some two or three technical indicators that you find are, are very helpful and, and kind of guide us through your train, a train of thought when you're looking at a chart, you open up your charts and do you mind sharing a bit on that? Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, of course, we have the moving averages and we have the RSI. Something, though, that I think some people don't pay that much attention to is the Fibonacci retracement tool. And um, Fibonacci numbers is something that we see in nature everywhere. We see the, in, in the development of flowers and in the human body, the ratio between different um, distances in the face and everything seems to be... Um, it's almost like the fabric of the universe has this ratio embedded in itself. So it's very fascinating on that, just let alone, just that alone. But looking in the charts, you, you find this ratio. And this is something that world top traders use also. And um, so basically you have this Fibonacci re retracement of 61.8%, for example, where if, if the price uh, goes up, 
usually we have a correction, of course, and usually we see uh, prices uh, come down to this Fibonacci level and then continue. So we have a reversal at these levels. And uh, this is something that is very, very powerful. And I use this um, in my videos and I mean, people can, can just go back and watch my videos. It can be extremely powerful. For example, from the $20,000 top down to the $3,000 bottom, if you retrace up to the 14,000 uh, um, top, that was exactly in the 61.8% Fibonacci golden pocket, which is between 61.8% and 65%. So exactly at that level, Bitcoin retraced back down again. And then uh, it doesn't even stop there because if you yet again do the same um, analysis from the bottom of 3,000 up to 14,000, once again, Bitcoin came down and retraced into this golden pocket, this Fibonacci level, and started to reverse up again. And um, if you go into these smaller time frames, you will see that this Fibonacci ratio over and over again is very, very valuable, very, very significant. And um, that is something that I use myself, uh, especially in Bitcoin. That is so, thank you so much for sharing that wisdom. Carl, you're a legend in the space. Obviously, for those who do not know you, which I think there are not many, but to catch you on your YouTube channel, The Moon. Yeah, for sure. So I, I upload one video every day. I talk about Bitcoin and I also upload a lot of stuff on uh, Twitter, many Twitter posts. I just love educating people about uh, Bitcoin. I just like, it's my passion for sure. It's um, I, I come from an economics background and Bitcoin just made immediate sense to me and I just love spreading the word and um, yeah, if you want to follow me, just go ahead. I, I love educating people. Yeah, I will definitely follow you. Don't forget to follow guys, subscribe to the channel, comment here below. And as you can see, the moon, just like the moon that's here on the table, this guy every morning really shares some really awesome content. It's very short, an average 10 to 13 minutes or something exactly. like that. So it's very easy to digest and, and some really, really good information. So don't forget to comment, subscribe, like, and if you have any questions for the moon, He's quite busy, Carl, but we'll try to get back to you with a great response. And see you next week, premiering at every Wednesday at 8 o'clock GMT. We love you and see you next week. Take care, guys. Yeah.